You want to study international relations or foreign policy. You want to attend a great school, but don't know what the best international relations schools are. Don't worry, I got your back. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Patel, the founder of Transition, and we've helped thousands of students pick the right college for them. And I'm looking forward to helping you. Before getting started, please press subscribe if you're interested in college and career topics. Our videos cover everything from AP classes to college essays to choosing the right career and school for you. In this video, I cover what are the best international relations schools, what makes each school so great, the resources offered at each school. Let's get started. Studying international relations as an undergraduate student is not like studying pre-law or pre-med, where you have a relatively set path once you declare a major. IR is an interdisciplinary major that equips students with skills to analyze and act within global, political, economic, and cultural relations that are in constant flux. The educational and occupational implications of an IR major are broader than some other majors, which makes it an extremely versatile degree. You may specialize your degree in whatever you want, and this flexibility offers a huge range of employment opportunities. Because of the major's breadth, it is important to choose a school that offers both a comprehensive and specialized curriculum. In this guide, I'm going to give you an overview of the seven schools that are strong candidates for international relations and help you choose one that is a good fit for your needs. As we have written and recorded on video before, we have big proponents of choosing a college or university based on your individual lifestyle and learning needs rather than off arbitrary rankings or prestige. Just like in other guides, I urge you to look for the best school for your personal needs and to look at these other factors, namely school size, location, and culture instead of numbers and rankings. In addition to these other factors, here are some things you should consider that are specific to the international relations major. Study abroad international work opportunities. As you may infer from its name, global and international work is an important part of student education in the international relations major. To graduate with good credentials, it is advisable that you acquire some experience abroad while you're an undergraduate. Look at the schools you're interested in and choose ones that have many overseas internships, work, and study opportunities to choose from. Consider the global regions the school has connections or partnerships with, and whether or not they match the countries and languages that you're interested in. It's also important not to get lost in the numbers here. Schools with long, long lists of study abroad options do not necessarily guarantee a quality student experience. Some schools will leave it largely up to the students to make the most of their study abroad or work opportunities. Look for programs with well-defined roles or jobs for students that will facilitate their learning and lead to actual applicable and employable skills. For example, rather than a vague description stating that students will work within a foreign government, look for designated roles like ambassador with job descriptions detailing specific work you will engage in. Political science, economics, languages, and creating your own major. There are some schools that will not have an official international studies major, but do not let that deter you from attending it if it is an otherwise good choice. Sometimes an IR course of study will involve declaring a general political science major first and then choosing the IR concentration or subspecialization. Other times there will not be an IR subspecialization and you will have to shape and specify your political science degree yourself. In these situations, check the quality of the schools, political science, economics, and language departments as you will have to supplement your political science degree with courses from these departments to make it have an international focus. In these situations, check the quality of the school's political science economics, and language departments, as you will have to supplement your political science degree with courses from these departments to make it have an international focus. It will be helpful for you to have an idea of the global region you want to study, so you can choose specific courses specific to those regions and then customize and streamline your degree based on those interests. Finally, check to see if these schools offer the option of creating your own major. Next up is networking potential. A career in international relations can involve work in all kinds of governmental capacities. So it's helpful if you can start connecting and networking with people right from the start of your education. Choose a school that offers a lot of networking potential. This can be through formal settings like job and internship fairs, or more informal ones like the school's location and general student body. Next is joint or dual degree programs. Think about whether you want to specialize your international relations education in a way that involves other degrees. For example, many students who study international relations eventually go on to pursue a career in law or business. If you know that you would like to do this from the beginning, then look for schools that offer joint degree options where you can combine both interests. All right, now that we have the groundwork covered, let's jump right into the best international relations school. First up on the list is American University, which is located in Washington, D.C. American University is a private research institution that consists of eight schools and colleges. Located in the northwest part of Washington, the school setting is suburban. It has a total undergraduate population of about 7,000 kids. 
The student to teacher ratio is 12 to 1, and 52% of classes have fewer than 20 students. DC is a relatively small city, so people are sometimes shocked by how vibrant life is there. DC is an amazing place. The city consists of a variety of neighborhoods, and you can find everything from urban apartments to suburban homes to rural farmlands. There are plenty of things to do in DC, including a lot of cultural activities, shopping, outdoor recreation, and a great food and beer scene. DC is full of national landmarks and every one of the museums is free to visit. The city is also very cosmopolitan and often reminds people of New York City. It is an East Coast city after all. There are people from all over the world and on any given day, you may hear different languages being spoken while you commute around the city. If this still seems too small for you, DC is conveniently and centrally located near many cities on the East Coast. The drive to Baltimore and Philadelphia is under three hours long each, and the drive to New York City is under five hours. You can make it in about four hours, actually. In terms of location, American University and Georgetown is probably the best school for students who want to study international relations. This is because Washington, D.C. is a prime political hub for the United States. I would add the George Washington University in there as well. This means opportunities and resources abound in and around the city. Students should have no problem acquiring real world working experience, even as undergraduates. Statistics certainly indicate that they have a step up from students studying at other institutions. 91% of undergraduates at AAU participate in internships. The political atmosphere around DC informs much of the student culture and activities. In fact, American University students have been rated among the most politically active with over 200 clubs and organizations available on campus. You will be in good company if you choose to go here for international relations. American University has an entire school dedicated to IR, the School of International Service, SIS, and it's the largest institution of its kind in the United States. As such, it's a competitive program to gain admission to. To be admitted as a freshman, students apply as part of their common application and must have at least a B average in high school. Those who want to declare the major if they did not originally enter American University as an international studies major must complete a prerequisite class, among other factors. Admitted undergraduates follow a highly comprehensive four-year track toward a BA in international studies. Students have eight concentrations to choose from, among which are global economy, environmental stability, and global health, and justice, ethics, and human rights. Students further specialize a degree by choosing a regional focus. They're required to take at least three classes in it, and many students can complete these courses abroad in the actual region they're studying, which is pretty awesome. During their four years at AU, students receive a lot of support from SIS. The school has a specific track or sequence in place for students to help them with course selection, and it gives students an outline of what they should expect and complete each year. The school also has its own advising services explicitly for international studies students, offering one-on-one -on -one help, express advising, as well as peer advising options. While SIS has students on a detailed plan to complete their BA in international studies, the school also understands that there will be students who desire a different experience to their international studies education. Because of this, the school is flexible in its degree offerings and has degrees available for every type of learner. This includes a three-year BA, a combined BAMA, and a joint degree with the Ritsumeki University in Japan. Check out these degrees to see if they're a good fit for you. Another form of support SIS provides is career development. Students may make an appointment for one-on-one -on -one sessions with a career advisor at any point in their program. AU students do particularly well in the workforce. Results of the graduation census from 2015 to 2017 show that 90% of undergraduates are working, attending graduate school, or doing both. Among the top employers of students from AU are the Peace Corps, the U.S. Department of State, Cambridge Associates, and Chemonics International. Number two is Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Harvard is a member of the Ivy League, and it's the most selective one out of all of them. It consists of 12 degree-granting schools. Located near Boston and Cambridge, Harvard is in an urban-ish area. It has a total undergraduate population of about 7,000 kids. The student-to-teacher ratio is 7 to 1, and 74% of its classes have fewer than 20 students. Cambridge is a town that consists of 13 different neighborhoods. Each one of them has its own unique characteristics. So you are bound to find a part of town that fits your personality. It's easy to commute around without a car, and there is an excellent public transportation system as well as bike lanes. Contrary to popular belief, many people who live in Cambridge report that they love the community for various reasons. While many expect the town to be pretentious or haughty because of proximity to Harvard and MIT, the general atmosphere is humble and down-to-earth. It is an enclave of diversity where many people of different races and backgrounds come together. Its closest to Boston provides students with both a small school setting as well as a real urban city. Harvard is one of the schools that does not have an official international relations major. But this is an easy fact to overlook because it has many resources that point to its credibility as a quality IR school. Harvard offers a master's degree in international relations 
through its Graduate School of Arts and Science, and it's considered one of the best programs in the field. It is Harvard, after all. It also offers an international relations degree through its Extension School, which is designed for adult learners, 21 or older, who have not earned an undergraduate degree. Finally, although there is no official IR major, the International Relations Group on campus is one of the largest groups at Harvard. Undergraduates from every school and concentration may join this group that works toward discussions and awareness of international affairs. The group organizes talks, symposia, and study groups. It's a great way to meet and network with other students who are interested in the field. It's clear Harvard has all the classes and resources necessary for an IR education, so it will not be difficult for students to customize their degrees and get the most out of their education. Students who want to pursue international relations here would go through Harvard College and declare a government concentration. Harvard College states that one of the aims of this concentration is to teach about the interaction among international actors and international relations. True to this goal, the school includes IR as one of its four required subfields, and students must take at least one course in it for this concentration. Students may then further supplement a degree with courses that relate to the international region they want to study. Harvard College also offers the option of creating your own concentration. This is not a guaranteed route, since students have to submit a petition with their plan of study. A committee then reviews to see if the student studies consist of a combination of disciplines not covered by the current offerings, and whether they would benefit from an individualized plan. If you think you have a special bend on your goals or aims for your IR degree, then give this a try. Harvard is a top-notch school in terms of study and work abroad opportunities and networking. The School Prestige offers many connections and partnerships with the world at large, and about 60% of undergraduates incorporate some form of international experience into their education. Not only that, students get advising on which programs best match their educational interests through the Office of International Education, OIE. Students may specify how long they want their experience abroad to be, like summer one term or one year, what their reasons are to study a foreign language or learn more about a particular region, and the living conditions they prefer, rural, urban, living with the host family, and etc. OIE takes all this into account and helps students choose the best fit program. Last, the school's prestige attracts many well-known people in the field, and you may have chances at building lasting relationships with them, or at the very least, get your foot in the door. School number three is the University of Michigan, located in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The University of Michigan is a public research institution that is included in Richard Mole's list of public IV schools. We have a written and video guide on public IVs as well. The school setting is urban. Ann Arbor is the sixth largest city in Michigan. The total undergraduate population is an impressive 29,000 students. Its student to teacher ratio is 15 to 1, and about 60% of the classes have fewer than 20 students. Ann Arbor is a beautiful city that has repeatedly been ranked as one of the best college towns by several outlets, including Forbes, The World Report, and the American Institute for Economic Research. The Huron River runs through the city, which is surrounded by green parks and fields, so the natural world is not as hard to come by. The university is literally built and incorporated into Ann Arbor itself, meaning that it offers both a good mix of students and city experiences. For example, in main student quarters, like the city state and south university streets, the food scene is dominated by great brunch, breweries, and diverse ethnic foods, while Ann Arbor's lively downtown area offers higher end options. Two things to consider are that while school is in session, the student population is much, much larger than year round residents. The other is that although Ann Arbor is urban, it has a distinctly different vibe than bigger cities like New York City, of course. It may feel even more so than other schools that you're living in a bubble. That being said, Ann Arbor is large enough that you will have plenty to do during your four years there without getting bored of your environment. Of the eight schools in this guide, U of M probably offers the most robust student experience because it's so large and diverse. Its large institutional public school status means that it can support a diverse and varied number of clubs, organizations, and education departments. This is evident in the school's highly ranked graduate programs, which encompass all types of fields of study, including College of Engineering, Ross School of Business, law school, and medical school. The University of Michigan also boasts 900 student organizations, 60 Greek chapters, and top athletic teams, which makes for great sports viewing culture. The Big House, U of M's football stadium, is the second largest stadium of its kind in the world. All this makes U of M a good school for people who thrive in big schools with a large student population and who can take advantage of available resources without becoming overwhelmed. This is not to say that those who prefer a smaller environment will not enjoy it here. The school is expansive enough that students may easily make or join smaller pockets of communities centered around their personal interests. To study international relations, students declare an international studies major, 
through the Program in International and Comparative Studies, PICS. They further specialize their degree with a subplan. There are four subplans to choose from, and each represents different themes and areas of interest within international relations. PICS engages in a lot of outreach to their students. Besides the usual advising options, they have a detailed 44-page long undergraduate handbook to provide students with guidance about the major. They also keep an updated blog that informs students about new opportunities, conferences, and funding opportunities. The major itself is designed to be truly comprehensive, offering both disciplinary depth and cross-disciplinary breadth. Students take courses across departments, and the major draws on methods developed in other disciplines, like sociology, political science, literature, economics, and many others. The education IR students receive here is guaranteed to not be solipsistic. It is up to date and informed by other relevant fields. U of M's belief in the importance of an interdisciplinary IR education is expressed in other ways too. Namely, in the numerous options students have for customizing the degree, the possibilities are near limitless. For example, IR students may choose to declare an international studies minor and pair it with a related degree, political science, economics, anthropology, and etc. Like some other schools on this list, students are also able to declare a double major. International studies paired with any other major within the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts, in which there are over 85 majors. Finally, for students who want to pursue a completely different degree in addition to a BA in International Studies, may apply for a joint degree program. There are joint undergraduate degree options in architecture, engineering, art and design, and music, as well as joint undergraduate graduate programs where students would get both degrees. U of M is definitely the school to be if you want to combine your passion for IR with any other completely unrelated or related field. Similar to the degree options at U of M, there are near limitless study abroad opportunities for students at this school. Study abroad credits will count toward an international studies degree as long as students coordinate their experience through the Center for Global and Intercultural Study, CGIS. CGIS works to provide undergraduate students with a wide variety of global engagement and learning opportunities around the world, and gives out significant scholarships to students who achieve this mission. A quick skim through their programs reveal that CGIS is involved in regions and countries all over the globe. And that's it for part one of this video. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to cover the next couple of schools that are great for international relations. If you have any questions about the international relations major, please post in the comments. Also, check out part two. We're releasing it at the same time we release this video. Okay?